You know, it's interesting because Jesus actually says, unless your righteousness, ex you shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Didn't he say that? So in other words, we have to attain a righteousness that is higher than the perceived religious leaders in their day. Do you think you could be more righteous than a pastor? I'm not saying I'm righteous, but I'm just using that as an example. Think about the most righteous person in the Michigan conference. <laughs> Can you be more righteous than that person? Truly godly person. With the help of Jesus. Okay, look at this. In Mount of Blessing, this is what it says. While the law is holy, the Jews could not attain righteousness by their own efforts to keep the law. The disciples of Christ must obtain righteousness of a different character from that of the Pharisees. If they would enter the kingdom of heaven. God offered them, in his Son, the perfect righteousness of the law. If they would open their hearts fully to receive Christ, then the very life of God, his love, would dwell in them, transforming them into his own likeness, and thus, through God's free gift, they would possess the righteousness which the law requires. But the Pharisees rejected Christ, being ignorant of God's righteousness, and going about to establish their own righteousness, they would not submit themselves to the righteousness of God. Did you catch what I just read? No. I'll read it again. No. <laughs> the point is, <laughs> the point of why Jesus hires a standard. Listen to this. And I want you to think about it when you go home tonight. The reason why Jesus hires the standard, he elevates the standard, is because he wants us to realize how impossible it is. He wants us to be in a position where we realize that is utterly impossible. I cannot do that. That's what Jesus is doing. Because if we are self-righteous, we're going to think, oh yeah, I could do that. If I try hard enough, I could do that. But Jesus doesn't even want that remotest idea to enter our minds. So he hides that we cannot possibly reach. And he says, unless your righteousness exceeds that, you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. Going back to the example of the mirror, you see your condition. You see your utter helplessness to achieve what the law requires. Who do you turn to? Jesus. Jesus hires a standard so that he creates in us an awareness of our weakness, of our inability to produce righteousness in and of ourselves. And Jesus is saying, do you see how high that standard is? And you say, Lord, I cannot make it. He says, I know you can't, but I can if you let me. That's how we need to see it. And you see a lot of churches nowadays which try to lower the standard to allow other people to feel better about themselves. But, are, but in, in actuality, they're doing a greater detriment to them. Because in the same way, they're depending on themselves. They're not depending on Christ. And so... Jesus himself says it is possible to keep his commandments. Can I share some promises with you? Promises that show that we can keep his commandments by his grace and by his strength alone. Philippians chapter 4, verse 13, you guys know this one. Say it with me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Do you believe that? Do you believe that also pertains to keeping God's law? Can we keep his law? I can do all things through Christ. I believe that includes that. Romans chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. Let's turn there. Romans 8, 3 and 4. This is wonderful. Romans 8, chapter 3. I mean, at chapter 8, verse 3 and 4. <clears throat> okay. It says... 
For what the law could not do in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in the likeness of sinful flesh, and for sin condemned sin in the flesh, that the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. That is powerful. That is powerful. And another one, another promise, Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Philippians chapter 1, verse 6. Are you there? It says, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ. So wonderful. Who's going to perform it? Jesus is going to perform it in you. Isn't that wonderful? You don't have to rely on your own willpower or your ability to do what he asks you to do. He will perform it in you. You claim these promises, friends, in your daily lives, and I guarantee that God will be true to those promises. He will enable you to do what you cannot do in and of yourself. 